child. It, it really is a wonderful trip. They are, um, they'll remember it for a lifetime. And we are going to record it so that any parents that can't come, uh, they'll, see, they'll see the slideshow and hear my voice. Too bad they won't see me. <laughs> But uh, then they, and any afterwards when we have questions and answers, we're going to make copies of those for the parents who are unable to be here. So El Haji or Kevin? If you Actually, can... they already started. Oh, okay. It's already started. Already on yeah. tape. <laughs> All right. So uh, the first thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, we've been doing this trip for 13 years. It's evolved into a, a wonderful experience. It goes hand in hand with our history curriculum. And uh, after I talk to you about the nuts and bolts of the trip, Mr. Edwards is going to talk a little bit about how it dovetails into our curriculum and how they get a grade in their history class for uh, going on the trip. Uh, the chaperones are uh, Mr. Edwards, Mr. Hill, the two history teachers, Ms. Disha, uh, the dean of students in the upper school, uh, those with us, she gets, this way she gets acquainted with all of the 8th graders and come springtime when it's time to schedule them, she knows them already, so that makes it nice. Uh, Mr. Petrino is going, and um, Ms. Follett, our Spanish 1 teacher in the middle school is going, so there will be six of us. You need to know that this trip is not cheap. It's $1,598. Back in the summer, you received a letter that you would be billed $999. The school subsidizes the remainder of $599. That has um, grown each year, the amount of subsidy, which tells me how important experiential education is to Tampa Prep. This year, for this trip alone, the school will spend almost $41,000 for our eighth graders to go on this trip. It makes me very proud of, to be able to offer this trip to our students and very humbling to work at a school who values experiential education so much. We've used the tour company World Strides. They are a student tour company. We've used them the entire 13 years. I could talk a long time about how they have come through in difficult circumstances, I won't, but they proved to be a very helpful, reputable student tour group. We have two very nice buses and dress rooms that the students will travel on. That money includes two, two tour guides, one for each bus, two night security people, one for the boys and one for the girls. So at 10 o'clock, your very tired chaperone can go to bed and rest assured that someone is sitting out in the hall to make sure that no late graders creep out of their rooms and nobody else is on that hall if they are safe. All of the meals are included. If they, um, we mostly eat out, but if we do not eat out, sometimes we eat at a uh, food court or something, then we have the cash to give to each student, we give them each $10 per meal, and then they take that, they spend it all, okay? If they don't spend it all, it's still theirs. So it includes all of the meals. Five o'clock, 5 a.m., we'll meet at ticketing at JetBlue. Please be there on time. We have 68 squirrely eighth graders to get through security. We've got it down to a science, but it really helps if everybody is there ahead of time, actually, so we can get them all through. We get back uh, Thursday night at 12.03 midnight, after midnight. This is one of the latest times we return. Uh, so be aware of that. You can either meet us at the gate or if you want to just see this down at baggage claim, that's fine too, either place. And, and the same for dropping off. You can either just drop your child off, and we will all be there to be, or you can depart and come in with them until we go to security. We are so pleased because this year we are back at the Embassy Suites. 
those rooms are so nice for a group like this because you know they have the bedroom and then they have the front room. So it gives them a little more space to spread out from each other. They've been together all day. It's kind of nice to have a little space to spread out in. So all of the contact information for the hotel is there if you would like it. Oops, I think I went too far. For you. Um, on Friday before the trip, if you pick up your child, don't let them get in the car without two of these luggage bags, because I will give them out luggage tags. Them. I will give them out to them at the last possible moment on Friday. They should attach uh, one of these to their backpack, because they all need to have a backpack with them, and one to their uh, checked luggage. There is no fee for the checked luggage, but everyone should put but they should take a, a check, luggage bag and check it because they don't want to carry all their stuff around with them in their backpack all day. And make sure that they dress to clear security so that their belts they have on are going to go through that kind of thing. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, if they take medicine, the chaperones won't, won't be carrying the medicine, so make sure that they've packed it. If you are not sure your child will remember to take the medicine and needs a reminder, send it to me in an email, document it, and the chaperones will make sure that your child is reminded to take the medicine. But they are going to have to have that pack with them. Okay. Okay, their backpack is their lifeline for the week. So they should have in it uh, iPads. They all need their iPad. Their earphones snacks, an empty water bottle, uh, well, you, can, you can read all of it, but here's, here's the deal. When we get to Logan and we get on the bus, they take us immediately to Quincy Market to eat, and then from there we start hiking the uh, Freedom Trail. If it's cold and their jacket is back in their checked luggage, there is no way to put that jacket back. I'm saying this because it happened about well, three years ago. The bus is drop us off and can't stay downtown. So they need their jacket in their backpack at all times, along with their hat and gloves, depending on the weather. It's a good idea to bring a charger, maybe a portable charger. Put their, please put their names on anything that is theirs. I would, um, I think it's a good idea to buy like, a lot of snacks and put most of the snacks in their check bag, but the daily snacks they can put in their backpack. Each day they just transfer more snacks. We were on the bus a lot, we walk around a lot, those kids get really hungry, so they can just go into their backpack and get their snack and, and their water, they're in good shape. Their ID cards, none of the uh, students who have been here for a while like them because it probably still has their sixth grade picture on it, but we're not gonna, they're not set up to take new pictures. They need to have their ID card. If they can't find it, we can print out a new one at, at no cost, but it's still going to have their old picture on it. Yes, this And every new student got had an ID photo taken of that first three days of their school. So, you know, new students, they have an ID card. Yes. So please ask them if they can put their hands on their ID card, and if they can't, let's take care of that now uh, rather than at the last minute. Um, they can bring their phone. Here's the deal about the phones. They are not to be on them during the day when we're touring. We consider that like school. It's not quite the same. It's different. But we don't, they, they should not be texting. If you are getting texts from your child and it's the middle of the day and you know they're on that bus, don't answer them or reprimand them because they're not supposed to be doing that. They're, at night, in the evening, when we're back at the hotel, um, that's fine. But during the day when we're touring and they're listening to what the guys say, they should not be doing that. Uh, it's always good to have a rain poncho as well. Those have come in very handy. They don't have to go and dress them. We want them to be comfortable. Uh, I tried to put a picture of what most of the kids wear. They have a, usually wear jeans. They can pack shorts or sweats, but they can only wear them in the hotel, not on the tour. Uh, they can wear t-shirts. Uh, they have to wear closed toe shoes for walking, comfortable shoes. They can put flip-flops for at night in the hotel, but they can't wear them 
on the tour. Um, make sure they have a jacket, a sweatshirt, just dress in layers, because that's what that's the best way. Put it on and take it off as they need it. Uh, the rule on my bus is if Mrs. Embry is cold, you have to have your jacket with you. So when they get off the bus, I make sure they have their jacket. Otherwise, uh, it's not good. They always ask about the rooms. Who are they going to be with? Uh, because we had to do it early, we've already assigned the rooms, but they don't know. And they're not going to know until they go to the room that night. Here's how we work it. They take it we take an index card. Every student writes down the names of four people that they would like to be in a room with. They're guaranteed to be with one of those four. Sometimes they're with more, but they're guaranteed to be one. Uh, over the years, this has worked out to be the most equitable way to do it. I don't want any child to ever feel like no one requested them to be in a room. And uh, sometimes, uh, you might be surprised to learn there are combinations that aren't so good in the evening. So, um, we, Ms. Lynetto does that. She's done an excellent job every year of uh, assigning the rooms. And they are always, they're, they're usually very pleased, always very pleased. The other thing that they should realize is this is not a vacation. It seems like it. But it's really not. This is a time for them to expand their horizons, not only about the city of Boston and the American history, but about being acquainted with uh, other students in their class, maybe students that they haven't had a chance to get acquainted with before. Often new friendships start because uh, students get acquainted with someone on their bus or in their room that they really never saw before at this time. So if you could encourage them to be open about that and open to that, that would be a great help. This is my phone number, my cell number. If you need anything or if you have a question or something comes up, feel free to call me at any time. If your child uh, calls you late at night and they're tired and they're grouchy and they start to complain about so-and-so and so it no my nerves and all that. That's fine. But encourage them to come and tell the chaperone, you're hundreds of miles away, you can't do anything about it. So if they come and tell one of the chaperones, and we're aware of the problem, maybe there's something we could do about it. So always encourage them to, to talk to the chaperone. Medicine, I've already spoken about. Oh, I put, <laughs> I put this on here. Because, uh, and then I realized, you know that movie, The Shining, where they realize in the book, uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull It sort of reminded me of that. But uh, this, as far as I'm concerned, this is my primary goal. It is a huge responsibility to take 68 8th graders on a trip. It is very much worth it, but it is a responsibility. And I want them to realize that they have a responsibility when we tell them to, um, uh, after lunch, we're all going to meet here in this courtyard at 1 o'clock, I tell them, if you're not five minutes early, you're late. They have to be heads up about the time. They have to be heads up about their environment. They need to always be walking with someone else. Uh, it's not like going on a vacation with your parents. If you're walking down the street and you pass a shop and you they can say, Mom, Dad, let's go in here and check this out. Well, we're 68 people and six adults. We can't do that. It's different traveling. It's a good experience to learn how to travel with a group. But they need to be aware that this is a different type of experience and there are expectations on them. If you haven't already, um, when you read the two behavior contracts you have to sign, uh, talk about it with them. Go over what the expectations are. It makes for a good conversation. One of them is for the World's Prize, and one of them is uh, for Tampa Prep. So lead over them. Um, let's see. Have I covered? Oh, money. Parents always ask about money. And I never quite know what to say about how much money to say. 
but you should send some. Here's the deal. If you, uh, everywhere we go that there's a gift shop, you know, like the gift shop is usually at the exit, so they're going to pass the gift shop. If your child is really interested in, in memorabilia, right, you might want to send them a little more money. Snacks, they seem to spend a lot of money on snacks. When you go to, or coffee or something like that, when you go to Quincy Market, $10 for a lot of kids is more than they need because a lot of them just go and get a slice of pizza or something. If they're going to get the lobster pot pie, then, then it's not going to cover it. So you, you have to kind of judge. A lot of parents uh, have a credit card and they just put money on it and then if they need to refinish it, they can. It's a personal conversation, but I, I would send them with some extra cash. One year, somebody uh, spent all his money the first day. And of course, we, we, we can cover that, don't worry. But he, uh, he had bought souvenirs for Aunt Sally and everything. So you just kind of have to know, know your child. Um, I have a I have a app that I've used in the past and I'll be sending it to you. They revamped it some, so I wanted to get acquainted with it a little more before I sent you the directions. But it's called a Selby app. And if, if you sign on to this app when, when you get it, then we'll be able to show you how to do it. I can send a text message to that app and it will automatically broadcast it to everyone who signed on. I don't have your cell uh, to text you. So I will be using that uh, for things like, oh, we've arrived, or you know, the plane's running late, or something like that. So uh, look, be on the lookout for that. Um, and the other, there's one other thing I was going to say, but it's left me, so when I think of it, I'll let you know. Uh, the kids, if they're taking a cell phone, we are going to collect all their numbers so that I can contact any group or any child if I need to. If, if they don't have to take a cell phone, if your child doesn't have one, that's fine. But if they are taking a cell phone, I'm going to have access to all of their cell phones. Um, before we open it up for questions, I just wanted to, Mr. Um, did Mr. Evans have to leave? He had to go to class. Okay. Well, I know what he was going to say. Uh, he, this is a grade, this is a big grade in our history, uh, history class. He, he releases a packet to them. He comes and downloads on their iPad the morning that we take off. There are all kinds of questions. There are places to put pictures, put pictures of certain things, uh, collect certain things like scavenger hunts. And they do this throughout the week. And then they come back, they polish it up, and they submit it to him for a grade. So uh, they, there, there is a serious portion to this. It's fun. Uh, you should come back with lots and lots of pictures. I think you'll enjoy looking at that. And um, now, I think we should open it up for questions. And Ms. Sousa is going to record them so that we can send them, to, send them home to anyone that couldn't come. And I think I have to, I'll stop this.